Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Yeah, it's been a long time that I've actually made a video. I uh, was busy with some other uh, commitments that I had. So anyways, uh, let's continue on. Uh, we're gonna discuss flight mechanics today. Alright, so flight mechanics deals with how the aircraft behaves uh, in various phases of flight. Alright, so first comes up straight and level flying alright so as simple as it sounds so the aircraft is straight and level now important thing to note here is there is a CP there is a CG so CG there is weight acting and this is the arm and from the CP there is lift acting alright so this is your CP this is your CG where the weight is actually acting and all of us know thrust is acting forward and drag is acting rearward like this alright so now in a straight and level flight what happens if this for obvious reasons in CG being ahead of CP CG being ahead of CP it creates a, a the lift weight couple creates a nose down movement alright so now this is compensated by offsetting the thrust drag couple so the thrust line is generally arranged below the drag line so that there's a nose up tendency okay so this is balanced now another question is how how do you move the thrust line below the drag line alright so this can be done by a lowering the height of the prop or engines whatever b smaller diameter of the prop and c adjusting the crank shaft angle okay so these are the three ways you can actually move the thrust line below the drag line the crank shaft is obviously in the propellers I'm talking about okay so now we'll discuss what are the factors factors that affect straight and level flying there are namely uh, four general factors alright so first one is your IAS it's the most important since the density at a co particular level is generally constant if your IAS is decreased then the CL has to be increased to maintain straight and level flight now how does this come if you remember lift equation half rho v square CL and S of course so now suppose the density is constant at a particular level correct now if your IAS is decreased so this is decreased then the CL has to be increased to maintain a level flight correct so so this straight and level flying depends on the velocity speed IAS indicated as speed so if you decrease V you have to increase CL correct so CL can be increased by angle of attack correct so you increase the angle of attack to maintain a certain straight and level flying attitude second altitude not attitude altitude alright so now altitude what is happening is loss of lift is happening at higher levels you know that the density is reduced correct so at higher uh, altitudes the density is reduced and which has to be compensated by higher TAS alright so TAS has to be so that the total lift remains same so L equal to half rho v square CL s now at higher level the this is decreasing so this is automatically compensated by increase in TAS so this whole thing is IAS has to be constant and then your lift will be that is this lift is basically you maintain straight and level flying for a given angle of attack 
because angle of attack is if you keep an angle of attack constant suppose you at 4 degrees all right so your whole if your density at higher altitude is decreased the whole the task has to be increased to keep the is constant to maintain level flying so higher altitude altitude density is decreasing so task is increased to maintain constant is and angle of attack correct all right third is weight or load factor now if you have more load it obviously requires more lift so in in case of straight and level flying so if you have a heavier aircraft so you have you need more lift to maintain straight and level flying so higher load or live load to say requires more lift this is by is proportional to all up weight okay fourth one is the l by d ratio now this is how is that maximum range maximum range is obtained obtained by is and angle of attack that is linked to the best l by d ratio okay so if you have the best l by d ratio then only you will have the maximum range all right so the next thing we are going to discuss is climbing okay so climb is a very important phase uh, for an aircraft so climbing here we go so climbing so this is your ground that's the aircraft's path with angle theta and suppose you have an aircraft like this all right sorry for my drawings guys though i mean it's not all that great but yeah so in this case you have the same during climb you have thrust correct and you have lift and you have drag and you have weight that is acting downwards towards the earth right and then there is this component i'll draw it with another sketch there's this component and this which is this angle is equal to this angle theta if you are good at math you guys you can just find out that this angle is equal to this angle due to uh, properties of uh, mathematics and this this will become w sin theta using trigonometry all right so now obviously aircraft requires some power to remain in the air okay so the excess power that is available is used to overcome drag so i'll just write it down so that it will become clear so aircraft requires power to remain in air clear second point here is important is the excess power the excess power that is available after overcoming drag is used for climb so thrust has to first of all overcome the drag and the excess thrust or the power that is available is then used for the climb this is the very important point how the aircraft is actually climbing and I, as i mentioned this is your angle of climb angle of climb it is the angle between the longitudinal axis suppose this is the axis longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the earth horizontal okay now what will happen if you increase the angle of attack increase angle of attack so now there are two things that will happen i forgot to write here this is w cos theta these are the uh, if you are good at trigonometry guys you just look forward theta the the 
uh, vector opposite to it is w sin theta because w is the arm here and this will be your w cos theta the base the base of the triangle will be your w cos theta all right so if you increase the angle of attack w cos theta will reduce so if you increase the angle of attack this this vector reduces in length all right so this means your lift requirement has gone down now with that w sin theta will increase that will demand for thrust requirement to increase so the the deal is now when you increase the angle of attack this is reduced but your w sin theta is increased so at at a higher angle of attack at higher angle of attack your thrust requirement has increased okay now there are few key uh, speeds here vx and vy all right i'll just discuss it on the next page vx and vy so vx is uh, what you can call it as vx is best angle of climb so this is the speed at which maximum altitude is gained for a given distance okay and this is also the difference greatest difference greatest difference between thrust and drag okay so this is vx vy is your best rate of climb so this is the speed at which maximum altitude is gained in a for a given time all right so suppose uh, the atc asks you to you know expedite your climb because they have some traffic so that means you will be at vx because at the shortest distance you will climb the maximum altitude it's a different speed now if the atc wants you to climb fastest say in another 2 minutes then you will switch over to vy that's the best rate of climb and then you will be climbing it with to the maximum altitude in a given time and this is the greatest difference between power available and power required all right now another key point to note both these speeds both these speeds are not affected by compressibility and vx is always less than vy this is important vx is always less than vy because this your speed this speed will be lower so that because at the lower dis, uh, at higher angle of attack at a given less distance suppose if you have you want to climb at the lowest for uh, shortest possible distance your angle of attack will be high which will make vx low and you will climb fastest but you have lot of time or a set set time is there so you might just go something like this so this will be your vy which will be all, always higher so vx is always lower because of the shortest distance okay next we'll discuss gliding it's fun to glide i guess let's see gliding all right so gliding similar diagram just the opposite way it looks so gliding is something like this this is obviously the glide angle what i'm talking about here and this is our aircraft 
and I'm going to use different sketch here again weight acting here this is your drag this is your lift and this is another component and this is the glide angle now important thing to notice here is the glide has only three forces acting lift weight and drag all right when it's a power descent power on descent all right when it's not an idle power on descent then you also have some thrust that's the only difference actually thrust and your speeds will be higher the ground speed will be higher because you'll cover distance horizontally as well okay now so in glide in glide forces acting are forces in glide are thrust sorry uh, drag lift and weight only okay and the glide angle is the angle between the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the same horizontal of the earth okay also the angle between the lift and the resultant of lift and drag see this is drag this is lift this is the resultant r of l and d correct so the angle between the lift and the resultant of lift and drag is also your glide angle this is your theta is your glide angle now the now the aircraft now this is interesting here to notice this thrust here it forms one pair and this forms another pair so that your aircraft is in a steady descent or glide when the forward acting acting forces are equal to rearward acting forces these are key points this is regularly asked in exams so T plus W equal to L plus D these are the forward acting forces this is basically in a descent and your rearward acting forces are lift and drag alright now what are the factors that affect the glide angle and glide distance we are going to discuss that in a bit so factors affecting glide angle and glide distance okay so the first factor that is affecting is our IS and L by D ratio okay so now the flattest glide angle is at best L by D ratio okay so any increase in drag results in higher glide angle or a steeper approach so the flattest ang glide angle so this is the this is the thing and this so at this flattest glide angle flattest glide angle will be at the best L by D ratio if you if any if you increase any drag on this it will be resulting a glide uh, higher steeper descent so it will be something like this and your distance won't be covered you won't be gliding far always fly at best L by D ratio to get max gliding distance just like I just now mentioned if you have a flat glide angle you will go further if you have a steeper approach you may just fall short of your target higher IAS gives more parasite drag this I have explained in the drag chapter is the same thing lower IAS gives what more induced drag okay and uh, yes now important point here higher or lower IAS than what VMD the same thing I discussed in the uh, drag chapter will always increase your increase of or, or your glide angle and give steeper approach okay 
next all up weight you will be surprised to know L by D ratio is independent of weight L by D ratio is independent of weight because you will fly at the best L by D ratio and the speed that corresponds to the particular weight so the glide distance will glide distance will remain same because you will fly L by D ratio that corresponds to particular weight alright wind what happens to wind best you will get glide angle so you have a tail tailwind will increase glide distance okay so just for a diagram how it looks is something like this so a tailwind will take you further glide distance still wind will land you here headwind will of course reduce your gliding distance so the glide angle will determine the distance that the aircraft can glide for a given change or loss of height the distance can be achieved only in still air glide distance will change when there are some winds so headwind will reduce your glide distance and tailwind will increase your glide distance glide ratio is the same as your L by D ratio so suppose this is the thing C A B so your glide ratio is given by A by B so it is the ratio of forward distance covered by an aircraft to the height lost so the forward distance covered in air is A to the ratio of the height that is lost by the aircraft for a given nautical mile all right so continue on to the next video for uh, flight mechanics i'll catch you up there